Alright folks, so in this video we're going to talk about 10 features that I would love to see on a uh, handheld ham radio. Over the course of the video we're going to look at a couple of different models that have some of these features. Now if we could just get them all combined into one. I was joking around about this the other day and I decided I would just go ahead and make a video of it um, so I can look back on it and laugh a few times. Anyhow, let's go ahead and get started. Oh, by the way, this list is in no particular order. Put your thoughts and comments below. I'd like to hear your opinions as well. So starting out, I'm going to talk about the SMA connector that you see on these handheld ham radios. And I really wish these radios would all come with a female SMA connector, which is on the left, on the Yaesu FT60. On the right, you see a Baofeng. I think it's a UV5R. And that is a male SMA connector. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but inside that connector for the antenna is a little teeny copper pin. And I'm always worried about breaking or bending that pin. If you break or bend that pin, you're done for. It's a lot easier to replace your antenna than it is to replace that pin inside the radio. So number nine, I want a tri-band radio. I want to get one that has 2 meter, 220, and 70 centimeter. And uh, the reason for this is because I want to use the 220 band, and I want other people to use it so we don't lose it or lose any more of it. And uh, a lot of people say, well, hey, Ape, we don't uh, make radios that have uh, 220 on there because nobody uses 220. But nobody's using 220 because nobody's making radios that provide it. There are only a handful of them out on the market. So please, for the love of God, if Baofeng, which you see there on the left, can go ahead and put a tri-band radio together for $35, let's see some other companies do it. The other two options that I have listed here are the Yaesu FT2DR, I believe, and uh, a Kenwood D74A, and uh, they're $500 radios. There's reasons why they're $500 radios, but it isn't because they're tri-band. Number eight is waterproof, and I want a waterproof radio. Let's just say I accidentally trip and fall in the pool while I'm uh, talking on my handheld. I want it to be okay. Or what if I'm out in the rain, or I get stuck in the rain, or what if uh, I get splashed somehow? I just would feel a lot better knowing that the radio can get wet and not suffer any damage, especially if I bought a more expensive option, like that Kenwood we just looked at for $500. Here we go. We got a Radio Oddity. This is about a 75. It's probably even less than that. It's a pretty bad radio, by the way. I believe that is the uh, early DMR model that everybody hated. And then we have the a Yaesu VX6, which is a, about a $300 radio, but it's completely submersible, and I like that. So for number seven, I have long battery life. And in this picture, I have the iLunes HD1. It's a DMR radio and the B-Tech uh, DMR6X2, which is a rebranded Anytone radio. Uh, so the Anytone radio is fitting in this category as well. Um, the iLunes has a 3,000 plus uh, milliamp battery, and the, uh, the B-Tech ships with a 3,100, I believe, and something around a 2,200. Now, people who use these radios are typically like, Jeepers, this radio's got a fantastic battery. And uh, that's been my experience as well. I do have both of these radios. But I think I messed up a little bit on this one. I did want to include in my list, and I didn't, so I'm kind of spoiling the list, uh, that I would like a radio that you can charge from a USB cable. And um, I actually do have a radio from Radiodity that costs about $12 that you can charge from the USB cable. And I get the people who are going to say, Ape, with these larger batteries, you just can't charge them from USB. Sure you can. I just think the ability to charge off a battery bank uh, maybe that's powered by a solar panel is huge, and I'd love to see that in a radio. All right, so number six, we're going to talk about what I call legit APRS. And um, by legit, I mean I want APRS that doesn't just send out an analog or a digital beacon every 10 minutes. I want a radio that can send and receive APRS packets, as well as messages. So, so I want to get position info. Maybe I want to get a picture from somebody. Maybe I want to get some text messages or a weather report. One-way beaconing is a showstopper. These are probably the two best on the market. They're probably the only two on the market that do legit APRS. And then maybe there's a Motorola out there that I don't know about that does it. But uh, these are the handhelds that I've got listed. The first one is the Yaesu FT3D. And then once again, we're taking a look at the Kenwood D74A. Both fantastic radios. Well, I can't really say that about the Yaesu because it's not really out yet. All right, we're coming around the bend at number five. And this is something that I complain about a lot. Um, and I think my arrow might be pointing at the wrong knob, but I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to go break out the FT60 to tell you. But I hate that these radios these days bury the squelch setting in the menu. So you got to hit a function button, then you got to scroll through your menu, then you got to pick the sequel or the squelch setting, and then you have to adjust that. 
a knob on the top of the radio makes it so much easier the way they did in the old days. Please, please add the squelch knob back to radios. All right, next, number four is a high contrast display. Look, I'm getting old and I can't see the way I used to. Uh, I might be in the dark, I might be in the sunshine, I might be in a bright room, I might be in a high glare situation, who knows where I am. But uh, not being able to read the radio sucks. So I want to be able to make sure that I can read the radio and see any settings that I have to make or any configurations that I need to change. Uh, two really good examples of this, um, again, the Yaesu FT3D. Um, I know it's not released yet, so we're going to have to wait and see if it's as good as the pictures. Um, and then I have the Anytone, and this is the 787 Plus, which is the latest version of the Anytone radio. Um, and it's got a really nice uh, dark background and bright letters, and you can configure that a little bit. Number three, here we are. We're on Wideband Receive. I have two radios here. The first one's the FT60 again, which does have Wideband Receive and AM on the airplane bands. But if you take a look at that Kenwood, that Kenwood's got a lot of the things I'm talking about. Um, that can uh, do Wideband Receive, AM, and Single Sideband, which makes it a really nice feature or function to have. Uh, you wouldn't have to potentially carry around maybe a uh, shortwave radio or something like that. Um, you get a lot of capability in that radio. But it'd be nice to see it uh, on more radios. All right, number two. And I get that this adds a lot of cost to a radio. But I'm willing to pay a lot of money for a radio that has the feature set that I want. I don't want to compromise and have three or four different radios, all because I might want to do something different. But a radio these days should include one digital mode. So we have the FT3 that has the Yaesu System Fusion, the iLunes HD1 with a DMR, and then that is an ICOM ID51. Maybe it's a 51A. And uh, that does D-Star. I just think that uh, the more proliferation of digital modes, the better. And I like to see more options for people, affordable options. I don't think 500 bucks uh, is what you should have to pay to get into a digital mode. And really, the most cost-effective one is uh, DMR, because you're seeing a lot of these cheaper Chinese radios that, that uh, feature that. But they lack a lot of capabilities. So nice feature-rich radio. I'd love to see a $500 uh, competitor to the, uh, to the Kenwood that actually does DMR. Would be a fantastic option. All right, and now we're down to number one, and it's an easy-to-use CPS or computer programming software that's multi-platform. And I have a picture there of Chirp. What I like about Chirp is it's fairly easy to use. I can run it on Mac, Windows, or Linux, and I can use it across a wide platform of radios. And it's free. It's a, it's a development project that a bunch of people work on to kind of put a piece of software out there. What I hate is having a bunch of radios and having to install a bunch of different software that works a bunch of different ways. Um, on my computer. It's a pain in the ass. I really don't know any other way to say it. And I hate having to have a certain type of machine, like a Windows 10 machine around example. For example, just to program my radios. I'd love to be able to all do it from a small Linux interface. And I talk a lot about uh, Raspberry Pis on my channel because a Raspberry Pi is a game changer. I can power that off of DC at 5, uh, five volts, about 2.5 amps, and I can do that in a field off of a solar panel. So it makes the ability to be able to program a radio that doesn't have a good programming interface from the keypad in the field a real thing uh, with a computer that's lightweight, easy to use, and is efficient and easy to power. So I know I'm saying a lot there, and I know that programming software is difficult to develop, but there's got to be a better way than what's going on now. All right, that finishes out my top 10 list, even though I added USB, so it's really a top 11 list. Let me know your thoughts below. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up, leave a comment, or even subscribe. Anyhow, thanks everybody for watching. Really do appreciate it.